Good morning, everyone. My name is Noah Gaffney, and I am delighted to have you here today to join us for the Inclusive Impact Summit. Um, I am thrilled to be here on behalf of the Rutgers Institute for Corporate Social Innovation. I, along with my colleagues, work with students, corporations, and other stakeholders to work with them on thinking about the role of business and society in a different way. We believe that business is not only able to make a positive impact on society, but also that when they do, this is a really strong business strategy, something that leads to their long-term financial and uh, capital success. So we've really seen that particularly over the past few years, there have been a number of research studies suggesting that business can have a positive impact on society and its bottom line. And we define corporate social innovation as a four pillar model. Uh, we really see that companies that integrate all four aspects of corporate social innovation are the ones that outperform their peers. So they undertake four pillars, including giving back to society, which includes uh, engaging with philanthropy, corporate social responsibility, volunteering, uh, they also align profit and purpose, so they actually create products and services that have a positive benefit on society, but also a financial return. Uh, so we see this in uh, something called creating shared value, B corporations, or purpose-driven leadership. The third thing they do is they engage in responsible business practices. So it's not just what they do externally, but it's really what they do internally as well. This entails paying a living wage to both employees and contract and gig workers, uh, focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and thinking about things like transparency, governance, sustainability, and the environment. Um, the final one is they advocate for social issues. So they really do take stands on the issues of the day, and they do this through advocacy, activism, and public policy. At the same time, we know that there's been a big push for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And at Rutgers, we are based out of the Newark campus, which as you can imagine, is a very resource constrained environment. And we're actually one of the most diverse campuses in the country. A third of our students are the first in their families to go to college. And in our campus, it's a minority white institution. And so we look at all of the ways that we can integrate diversity into corporate social innovation. And we have a framework on multiple diversities, uh, which really takes into account traditional factors, which you'll see on the top row, things like race and ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, et cetera. And then we also have another five factors, which may be more hidden, uh, but are equally as important to making sure that we make progress on diversity. And the reason we look at all of these 10 factors is because we know that diversities are interconnected. So there is a link between socioeconomic status and race. There is a link between lived experience and gender. If we think about all of the, the women that have dropped out of the workforce during COVID and may not be intending to come back. And so we know that these are interconnected and that is why we really focus on the intersection between corporate social innovation and diversity, equity, and inclusion. That is what we call inclusive impact. Inclusive impact is bringing together diverse stakeholders through an intentional process of co-creation to drive social innovation. We see that this aligns social innovation principles with those of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and multiple diversities in particular. And so we embed inclusive impact into five themes, and we'll be describing three of those today. And when we do that, you can see that there really is that intersection between the biggest issues of our time and that diversity, equity, and inclusion lens. Uh, so the first one we focus, when we look at climate change, we look at climate justice. And climate justice, uh, we see as an, a social as well as an environmental issue. Unfortunately, climate change disproportionately impacts poorer communities and individuals. And so we link social justice to climate change locally, nationally, and globally. The second issue, as we all know today, is, is really around health, right? So we know that there's been a pandemic and there have been underlying health issues that have been bubbling for some time. 
So when we look at health outcomes, unfortunately, they're very dependent on location, race, and socioeconomic status, particularly in the United States, but this is really a global trend. And so we look at the social determinants of health to, replicate, uh, to recommend practical steps for better and more equitable outcomes. And then the final thing that we do is when we look at economic prosperity, we think about shared prosperity. So how do we leave no one behind? How do we reach the individuals and communities that need it most? As I mentioned, we're anchored in Newark, but we really look at this from a national and global standpoint, in addition to a local one, because we see local case studies and the grassroots impact as the way to create national and global change. And so we're really excited because today you'll hear researchers from all around the world. We have representatives from three continents, uh, from some fantastic universities, both Rutgers and external. As you can see, we have individuals from Singapore, China, uh, Amsterdam, and everywhere else in between. We have people from Canada, Mexico. And so we're just really thrilled that we're able to have such a diverse perspective on those three issue areas. And so I'm just going to highlight this packed agenda for today. Um, so my colleague, Professor Gina Wartenberg, will be uh, introducing the shared prosperity track, which will take place throughout the morning. Uh, we'll start with a session on win from within, how corporate social responsibility models can be applied in digital platforms. Uh, we'll continue with for-profit firms contribution to society and applying conviction narratives for good. Uh, we'll talk about social entrepreneurship and stigmatized settings and the case for femtech. Uh, and then we'll move into stakeholder capitalism, how organizations' capabilities can promote individuals' freedom. Uh, we'll take a brief break for lunch, and then we will continue with a panel on health equity with our distinguished executive in residence, Aaron Byrne, formerly the head of sustainability at Social Impact at Nova Nordis. And then she will be working with a number of researchers and experts in the space to really unearth issues around health equity. In the afternoon, we'll be pivoting towards climate justice. We'll have an introduction from uh, Professor Robert Kopp, who is a very well-known individual in this space and head of the climate task force at Rutgers University. Uh, we'll move into sessions like CEO activism, a delicate balancing act, where we are from matters, we want to see you succeed, the garbage in ESG, ESG data, literal garbage, and a summary of the day from Executive Vice Dean, uh, Professor Petra. And so we will have, um, sorry, Petra Christman, and we are just thrilled to have this fantastic lineup for the day. We're really looking forward to your participation, and we're excited to have you join us. And so with that, I will be handing over to my colleague, Professor Gina Wartenberg, and please feel free to move from the lobby to this next session. We're really excited to have you here today. Thank you again for joining us.